Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled Holographic Sky Generation System. Now, the photograph below shows a regular pattern across a large portion of the sky and indicates that a holographic projection system is in use in our skies. This type of system has the potential to seal the surface of the Earth from everything that may be happening outside it or in space. In this article, I'll detail how such a holographic projection system would work. Lasers make up a large part of the system as holographic projection does not work without lasers. Lasers emit light which can remain as a narrow beam for very long distances and which can also be very narrow in terms of spectrum, i.e. a laser can be in one single color of light. In the pattern below we see that lasers in two different colors are in use. As you can see it's blue and magenta. So we have blue and magenta lasers being used here. But in order for the pattern to appear when the laser shines onto the atmosphere, the atmosphere itself has to be made into a hologram or a photographic plate with the hologram encoded on it. The lasers are most likely above the photographic plate altitude, so this must be a transmission hologram. Holograms can be reflection or transmission holograms and can be produced by illuminating a subject or scene, which here we call is the object, with laser light. The photographic plate will then have encoded on it the interference pattern which resulted from the object being illuminated by the light. So here's the, the process for recording a transmission hologram. And what we have is a laser and this is the laser beam. Uh, this is a beam splitter. It splits the laser beam into two. One goes in this direction, the other one goes into that direction. There's a mirror so it's reflected there and then it goes through a diverging beam which spreads out um, the beam. It then illuminates the object and the light that then is reflected off the object is recorded onto the photographic plate at the same time that uh, the plate is also being illuminated by the rest of the beam that came this way also went through the diverging lens which spreads out the beam it's reflected and it then reaches the photographic plate. So it's um, the interference between these two light beams that is recorded on the photographic plate. And so uh, this will then become a hologram. It will have encoded on it the uh, hologram uh, information from this object and then it can therefore reproduce everything about this object that has been recorded on it. Now in order for the hologram to be displayed, in other words in order for the three-dimensional image of the object to appear, the holographic plate has to be illuminated by a laser beam positioned at the same angle to the plate as the reference beam that was used to record it. And in this case this is the reference beam. It's the part of the beam that did not actually illuminate the object. It just came straight through and then um, it eventually reaches the photographic plate. And so it, that reference beam is what's used to animate the, uh, the hologram. Now, uh, because the photographic plate is in essence a diffraction grating, uh, although it doesn't have regular spaces, it has different spacings between the grooves, um, three images are produced when it is illuminated. Only two of them will look like the object. And so this would be the reconstruction beam, which will be at the same angle as the reference beam. And that um, part of it will go right through uh, undiffracted. Um, it will uh, not be deflected in any direction. But then there is a first 
order image on one side and a, and a first order image on the other side. So basically it produces a diffraction pattern. And depending on where the observer is, they will see the image that is produced by this diffraction pattern. And it is the first order images that, uh, that the observer will see. There will be second order images, but they will be faint. Now, so two of these will look like the object which was recorded on the photographic plate. One, it will be a real image. So this real image will be real light rays that will reach uh, the observer's eye. And so this, it will be a real image that the observer will see in front of the photographic plate or the hologram. The other one, um, the light rays only seem to come from where the image is. So this is a virtual image. It will still look exactly the same as the object that was recorded. Now, so uh, we have um, therefore this, these transmission holograms producing both real and virtual images and which a person sees depends on the angle. Holograms can also be computer generated so that it is not necessary to go through the recording of a subject or a scene. The computer generated holograms produce encoding on a photographic plate of scenes that may never have existed. The encoding which carries the information which will reproduce the computer generated scene can then be transmitted to the sky campus produced by the metallic particles injected into the atmosphere by the chemtrail program. This turns the sky at cloud altitude into a transmission hologram, which is then just in need of being illuminated by a laser beam or several laser beams side by side, probably a whole array of them. So um, this would be what it uh, this system would look like. This will be produced by uh, chemtrail nanoparticles, metallic nanoparticles, and uh, they would be denser in, in certain places than in other, thus reproducing or encoding in this part of the sky the hologram information. So this is like the photographic plate or a hologram, which is then illuminated from above by a laser. There will be lenses which cause uh, the, len, uh, the laser light to spread out. It illuminates the hologram and then an observer below will see the holographic images. Uh, they may be the sun, the moon, the planets, whatever. I've placed the sun here and parts of the sky with clouds, whatever. There will be real images and there will be virtual images. The virtual images are seen at higher altitude. The real images are seen at lower altitudes. And uh, basically the sky's the limit with this kind of technology. They can produce anything they want. Now, in order to turn the atmosphere into a hologram or plate with the holographic encoding on it, a sound wave generator process may be used, which will create regions of higher and lower density of metallic nanoparticles. The low density patches will become holes in the plate and high density patches will become the solid part of the plate, which will thus form a type of diffraction grating in the sky. In conclusion, a holographic generation system seems to be in operation in the Earth's atmosphere. The sky, sun, moon and planets, which the powers that be would like to place there, will become a part of this holographic projection. And at the same time, it can be used to hide real objects that may be in the sky and which they do not want the Earth's population to know about. Chemtrail particles, lasers, and sound wave generators will be necessary parts of this holographic sky generation system. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.